Hey there, sports fans. It is I, Josh. I am one half of Amazing Fantasy Football. My co-host, Chris, couldn't make it today. He got himself pretty deep in Pokemon Go, and he is off the coast of Maine trying to get a Gyarados. I'm not really sure what all that means, but whatever. I am here to give you an eye on DeAndre Swift, the Detroit Lions running back. I wanted to uh, do an eye on video on Swift because I really liked him coming out of Georgia, and but I didn't really like his um, his his landing spot in Detroit. It was just kind of a messy backfield last year in 2020. But the Detroit Lions have kind of cleaned up their backfield a little bit, so I wanted to kind of see how love should my how high should my love for Swift go. And so I watched all the game film, of course, and I've prepared some clips for you, and hopefully they'll help you kind of make your own mind up, too, of what Swift brings to the table. And at the end here, I'll, I'll kind of roll it all back into fantasy football because, hey, that's what amazing fantasy football is all about, right? So as I always do, like I said, I watch all the game film, and I wanted to, since Swift is going to be a sophomore player here, I wanted to read you all his draft profile and kind of like to kind of give you what NFL teams were thinking about, you know, when Swift was going into the NFL draft back last year in 2020. Boy, 2020, it was only a year ago. That That's that's crazy. That's crazy. Anyways, let's get on with this quote here. I always like to take them from NFL.com. I think they do a nice little draft profile blurb there. So I quote, Swift possesses the play traits and running style of a skillful NFL running back and is the la the latest in an avalanche of Georgia running backs. Tempo and decisiveness are his calling cards, making him a highly talented inside-outside zone runner. He's a cerebral runner who understands block timing and uses quick cut agility and rare spatial awareness to read and react to defenses beyond the second level. Swift isn't overly... Explosive as a home run hitter and doesn't run with the violence of last year's top running back, Josh Jacobs, and that would have been in 2019, of course. He can step right in and provide early stability and production as an efficient every down back with rookie of the year potential. Let's take a look at all this film that I prepared for you. The first uh, s uh, set of clips I chose to feature for you were based on DeAndre Swift. And I know that's only in like 12 games or whatever, but still 32 receptions. And he had a lot of receiving work or at least um, targets in the NFL this past season. So I wanted to, I wanted to focus on like what Swift can do when he's getting targeted both as catching it and what he can do after the catch as well. Here's those clips. In our first clip, it's a nicely ran wheel route where Swift catches the ball for the touchdown. Next up, it's a quick dump off pass to Swift who has plenty of open field to run, makes a quick cut to avoid a defender and is eventually brought down for a nice 25 yardish gain. And now we have Swift getting a screen pass which he takes up field and cuts to get an extra five yards. Here's Stafford targets Swift, who has the ball clang off his hands. Next, the ball is thrown right to you, buddy. Come on, just catch it. And lastly, y'all might remember this clip. It's from week one at the very end of the game versus the Bears, where Swift just can't bring the ball in for what would have been the game-winning touchdown. And my next set of clips for you, it is to showcase Swift's field vision, which is actually really good, and it's a good thing to have it being only 5'9 and about 212 pounds. It, I mean, it's... You're not bringing a ton of power to the table, so this this vision is very key to his game. So let's take a look. First, Swift gets the ball. He kind of hesitates just briefly, allowing a hole to develop, and then he runs through the hole, hurdles the defender right before being brought down. Next up, Swift sees there's no reason to run straight, cuts off to the left, sees the defender, cuts his way to the right, and pretty much walks in for the touchdown. Kind of like the previous clip, there's no room to run straight ahead. Swift bounces off to his left, sees a defender, so he cuts right to the right and heads back towards the left side of the field where he's finally brought down. Now I put together some clips showcasing DeAndre Swift's power or in some cases lack thereof. One thing I noticed while watching this game film on DeAndre Swift is that if he doesn't have a good running start, he has real problems getting any push. So I, and I hope I convey this in these clips, but let's take a look. First up, Swift gets the ball and powers his way in for the touchdown. Next, Swift gets the ball and runs into a couple of offenders and just goes nowhere. Here we have Swift powering through a couple of D linemen before finally being brought down. Same game, but this time he gets stood up and just can't quite make it into the end zone. 
Same thing here, runs into the pile and gets absolutely no push whatsoever. Another thing I noticed is that there are times when Swift would just and would just avoid contact. And what I mean by that is instead of just running into the pile and trying to get some push, he just he would instead try to run around and it's just sometimes you just got to go straight forward. You'll see. Here we have Swift getting the ball and running off towards the left side of the field. Right here you can see Swift make the decision to cut back instead of just hitting the defender square on. Why cut back? You gained absolutely nothing. Now we have Swift just dancing around the line of scrimmage. Had he had just plowed forward, he probably could have gotten a yard or two in that play. Instead, he ends up losing a yard or two. Same game, same thing. Just run forward, man. And lastly, as I always like to do with these IM videos, I like to end them with some highlights and just some fun plays because I've just had enough of that negativity. Let's check them out. First up, Swift gets a dump off pass. He turns around, heads up field, and hurdles the defender before getting tackled. Swift hurdled like six defenders in 2020. It was kind of uncanny. It really kind of reminded me of like no Sean Moreno if y'all are young enough to or old enough to even remember him. <laughs> then Swift cuts to the crease and takes off downfield. I don't like the end of this play where he should have just kept going. Was Swift going to outrun that defender? No, but just keep running, man. But I do like that play very much. And my penultimate clip for you is Swift bouncing, up, bouncing onto the left for a 15-plus run. And then, my personal favorite, Stafford is about to get tackled. He flips the ball to Swift, who catches it, kind of hops over a DB before finally being brought down. Well, everyone, those have been my DeAndre Swift clips that I've prepared for you. What did I learn from all this, and what did I want to convey to you? Well, Swift is definitely a smaller back that could use some more speed and power to his game. Not trying to say he's weak or slow. He's just not Derrick Henry powerful, or he's not Jamar Chase fast. He can catch the ball really well, though. And, but he, at times, he did have a couple of lapses in concentration, you know. Overall, though, I liked what I saw from Swift. But I'm just not sure he's going to be an RB1. I think that's going to take, like, a, an early-on injury to Jamal Williams for that really to happen. So what I mean by I don't think uh, Swift's going to be an RB1, I think there's a few factors that are going to contribute to that. First off, until Detroit's defense actually starts keeping the team in ball games there are going to be times when swift is just not going to get rushing down work and i mean no one no running back on the team is you could say that this is good for swift in that in the sense that he's going to get more receiving work sure but it, it will kind of game him game script him out of some plays at times the other problem is jamal williams Jamal Williams is a more than capable running back. This is and this is Jamal Williams who came from the Green Bay Packers in free agency. There has been a lot of fluff pieces about how the coaches really like Jamal Williams and yada yada. That's great. And Jamal Williams did suffer playing behind Aaron Jones, who is really good. Don't get me wrong. I don't know. I feel like Deion, Jamal Williams is going to cut into Swift's workload, but I still think that Swift's workload is going to go up from last year assuming that the Lions aren't just getting blown out in every single game. Lastly, while the Lions did use a second-round pick on Swift in the 2020 NFL Draft, I'm, I'm not sure he's really like an upper echelon level talent. Like, he's not a Saquon Barkley or um, what Zeke was coming out of uh, college or, you know, Christian McCaffrey or whatever. He's good, but he's just not elite. And what I'm saying is while good running backs can be RB1s, look at you, David Montgomery, um, and even okay ones too, I just I think between, you know, the the lack of Lions defense, Jamal Williams being there, and the the good but not elite talent of DeAndre Swift, I think he's just going to be more of an RB2 this in this 2021 season. According to Fantasy Football Calculator, that that's what Chris and I always like to use, and we always go by half PPR scoring, DeAndre Swift is going as the 212, so the very end of the second round in 12 team leagues. I feel like that's pretty good. He's going right behind Joe Mixon. He's going ahead of Josh Jacobs, and he's going ahead of J.K. Dobbins, going behind... Antonio Gibson and behind Cam Makers, those two are going towards the beginning of the first round. And I feel like that's pretty appropriate. I haven't sat down to do rankings yet, but I feel like the end of the second, that's pretty good. I mean, how would you feel about getting like a, 
a Christian McCaffrey and then pairing him with DeAndre Swift at the end of the second. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I, I wish I could say that I loved DeAndre Swift more and that he belonged higher up, but I feel like you're getting a very, very appropriate value at the end of the second. Now, if he slips into the third, like even the middle of the third, as the offseason rolls along and we get closer to draft season, that's even better. I love it then. If he starts climbing up into the second round, though, it, like I said earlier, it's got to take a Jamal Williams injury for his value to really go. And I, th- at least I think, I think it's really going to take an injury to to Williams for his value to climb up into being like an RB one. And that's and we also have to remember too, folks, that Jared Goff is there in Detroit now, he, and he is not Matthew Stafford. They have some. They have their pluses and minuses when you compare them to each other. But overall, Matthew Stafford, in my eyes at least, is a better better quarterback than Jared Goff. Just remember all this when you're when you're sitting there in your drafts and you're at the end of the second, maybe the beginning of the third. You get swift towards the beginning of the third, and now he's potentially, if you went running back, running back, and you want to go a third running back with swift, oh, heck yeah. But if you want running back wide receiver and you're looking at Swift as as your second running back, yeah, sure, great. You know, I don't think I want Swift as my RB1 if I went wide receiver or a Travis Kelsey in the first round. You guys can form your own opinions. Thanks for checking out my my film on Swift. I hope you all found it um, at least a little entertaining and also very informative. Until next time, have a goodbye, everybody. 